Oh, g'day guys. Today, we're gonna be fitting some new wheels to the gold ute from TikTok. So we're down here today at my local tyre service and I've got some new tyres here to fit up. Hang on. <laughs> That's a highway terrain. You got a mud tyre? That's got a bit of tread on it, that one. I don't think it's big enough though. I reckon that one's big enough. I don't know about the tread pattern though. Hey guys, someone ordered some tyres. <laughs> Got a special guest in here today. This is uh, Jono the- Fucking oh, say that. <laughs> oh, this is Jono. What's oh. happened to Bully? <laughs> nah, just looking for some tyres and you've just brought them in here. Oh mate, you've got the special delivery. The, uh, what are these? The new boulders from Goodyear, I think. These are, in fact, the new boulders from Goodyear. Oh. On today's episode, we're going to be feeding my new tyres to my new rims with my new internal feed lock. Bully, what are you doing up on the Ute, mate? I'm a YouTuber, isn't that what you're meant to do? So we've got the apprentice, Jono, here today. He's come down to give me a bit of a hand. He's going to be one of the new apprentices that you might see occasionally on the channel. Jono, you wouldn't mind going and sweeping that over there, would you, mate? Mate, you missed the spot over here. <laughs> so, me and Jono, he's going to be basically like the second set of brain cells to, to my two brain cells. And we're going to run you through the process. But first, I'll show you what I've got here anyway. These are my new rims. So, obviously, I've got these Facebook Marketplace wheels on my ute with these half bald tyres. So, these are a new rim out from Wheel Pros. And they are called a Black Rhino Outback. Hey, mate, what, uh, what's the talk that you got to do these beadlock bolts up to? Beadlock bolts? Hey, these are fake beadlocks. What do you mean beadlock bolts? I wouldn't run beadlocks. They're illegal. Mate, I'm proud of you. You're actually making a change. 2024. <laughs> it's, it's a new year, new pulley. I'm trying to do my best there. Obviously, I have a lot of grief with the cops. If you've been following me for long enough, you probably worked that out. So, yeah, I've gone to a non-beadlock rim. So, these are like for my for my daily kind of wheels. So, what do you reckon, Jono? Mate, I'm hoping that our next high country trip, we both won't find ourselves pulled over and making some new friends on the side of the road and getting some free stickers. <laughs> that's exactly right. So, yeah, anyway, that's a black rhino outback rim. That's what it's called. And these are in stock at Wheel Pros. This here is a tire. <laughs> so these are my big, big American tires. Doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? It doesn't quite. No. <laughs> uh, these are my big, Auss big Aussie boy tires that are made in USA. The new Goodyear Wrangler Boulder. MT. So these are a new tyre that's out. So these only got released earlier this year. They are their new aggressive mud tyre from Goodyear. Anyone that's been following me for a while will know that I've been running the same tyres for like the whole time I've had the car. The same brand, the same tyre and I really liked them but I just thought that it was time to try something different and this tyre caught my eye. I actually seen these on Richo's car because Richo's just got them on his FJ45 and also Tyler Thompson has just done a 5,000 kilometre high country trip on his, so I kind of hit up those boys. I asked Tyler what he thought of them. He said they were great, said they were really grippy. He reckoned that they outperformed his last tires, all this stuff anyway. I just thought I'd give them a go. I really like this sidewall design. It looks really aggressive. What do you reckon, Jono? I reckon it's actually got to have some good bite. It's it's a lot more aggressive than, than you know, you should bite up pretty nice. Probably a little bit softer, which means it'll be nice and grippy, but it feels like a, a good, it feels like a good solid tire. I don't know. There's, that, there's one way to find out is to put on the Ute and go for a drive, I guess. But well, that's it. Tire, tire wear is going to be an interesting one because, you know, living out in the scrub, like when you're about two hours that's away. That's exactly right. You've got to do a lot of Ks. The Goodyear man was telling me these little these little bumps here, uh, they actually have a purpose because I was just looking at them thinking that they were just there to look cool. But apparently uh, they 
they assist with like throwing the mud out or something and he said that because they're like little bumps it gets like little air pockets under the mud and then once you get a bit of speed up it just flings it out so that's pretty cool obviously there's a lot more uh technology in the tires these days isn't there Jono? well that's what looking at it it's a very interesting i've never seen that before mate do you reckon we could just stop talking about it and actually just get it done please <laughs> yeah. so this thing here is an internal bead lock well this isn't all of it but this is some of it uh, I'm not going to talk about this because I actually don't know anything about this. Well, I know a little bit about it, but we've got some boys here that are going to help me talk about it and oh, give you the. <laughs> going to give you the correct information. So I'm Levi and I'm Kurt Baker brothers. We're the owners of Aventura Group, and we manufacture these bead locks here in Australia. So there you go. It's an Australian-made product, and it's called a second air bead lock. That's it, yep. So I know you guys like a good story time from my first episode that I put up. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story. Basically what's happened is I've been defected a couple of times for my mechanical bead locks. Mechanical bead locks are great and that like they're really necessary off-road for like your more extreme off-road stuff. So I know there's probably people out there that might ask the question of like, oh what do you even need a bead lock? We go forward all driving all the time without bead locks, but you know, like being able to let your tires down to say six or ten psi without even having to sort of worry at all is a big advantage for some of the wheeling that we do. Well I've seen a lot of people, I've seen plenty of comments and all different people on Instagram saying, you know, you don't need bead locks on a road car and all these things, and it doesn't take much. Well, like, it, it's it's correct. Like, you don't need them you on the road, yeah. but yeah, obviously, like, it comes to a point where I wouldn't recommend driving on the road because you've got to you've got to maintain bolt torques. They come loose, like the vibrations do, yeah, through and the road. I reckon it's it's probably between between a thousand k. I reckon under a thousand k's, you got to be checking those mm. torques because they they will come loose. Yeah, correct. So so yeah, there's just like you know, there's these things, but. Mechanical bead locks are essentially great and I'm still gonna use them, but one of the big problems for me is the place. Like, I don't know about you, but I've been defected a couple of times and like, it's pretty obvious they, yeah. they walk up to your car and they like look at the wheel and go, is put that a hand, bead lock? And put their like, hand in there, feel for the back of the bolts. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I don't want to know, a bead lock? No, nah, yeah. what's a bead lock? <laughs> well, anyway. When we were in the high country and yeah, I was, I was in the Mrs. Jeep and actually, the set of wheels I was running actually says on there off-road use only and has the bolt torque printed on the front of the wheel. <laughs> so so when, when the lovely lovely chap asked me, are they real? I kind of had to admit it and say, yeah, yeah mate, unfortunately they are. I, I stuffed up and I've yeah done the wrong thing. So the Other people are going and saying, oh, just go and change your wheels and clear the defect. But like how many times do you want to do that? Also, I've been fined $800 the last couple of times. Like, you know, that's a bit, that that's a bit of money. Like just something that if there's a solution there, then I want to at least try it because I'm just kind of a bit fed up with it. And I've done a lot of engineering and stuff on my ute to try and get it like as well, legal as possible. Well, you're all legal it's, now. It's, so it's all basically legal. So it's just like- Lift, core, core conversion. Yeah, and, and I mean, so like <laughs> my off-road wheels are probably a bit bigger than what I should have, but I try not to use them on the roads. So basically I'm trying to get a set of road legal kind of wheels and just minimise, you know, the, anything that the cops can pick on, basically. Well, it's good. It's good that you can actually go touring, go enjoy. Like the last time, you know, you got done, you were Great Ocean Road, you were out with the missus for a nice weekend away. You, yeah. You weren't actually... I literally was just, yeah, we, we were into the off-ways and then, like, we are cruising down the Great Ocean Road just going home. Just, we were going to stop for sunset and we actually missed it because the cop pulled me up and gave me an $800 fine and tried to ground me, so... Yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's hard. It, it just ruins your weekend. It's not worth, like, for, the, for those weekends that you don't need a mechanical bead lock or your mm. big, you know, your, your big tyres, to be able to just roll, still be able to go off-road, yeah. have, have, you know, air down, do what you need to do, and then not have the stress cruising home. So I'll just tell a bit of a backstory. What happened was, after that defect, I was kind of a bit fed up, and I started doing a bit of a research. I actually had a guy online on uh, Instagram, he sent me a message and said, why don't you try these internal bead locks? And I'm like, what the hell are they? Like, never yeah. heard of them. And honestly, I could not find anything online about internal bead locks. So I started looking, I looked on YouTube, I looked on the whole Google search, I looked everywhere. In the end, I come back to what this guy actually sent me. Well, it is surprising because um, they've been around for a long time. It's not yeah, a they have, product. they have. And, and that's when I've found out now. When I was looking, I, I couldn't find anything. And so, but I found this one company in the USA yeah, right. And I messaged them. I just reached out because I was like, this could be an option. Yeah. And I read all about them and I was like, well, that's really cool, but it's like really simple. Anyway, I got talking to them and I was sort of trying to get them to send over some for the USA. And they were talking about like, you know, there's actually some that are made in Australia. 
And I'm like, what? Like, you're joking. Like, I've looked yeah, everywhere. Never. I looked everywhere online and anyway, I couldn't actually find anything. So they actually then put me on to a company in Australia, which is Second Air Beadlocks, which is what these are. And I got talking to them and speaking with the owners, the boys that you just seen before, they're actually from Swan Hill. It's so right around the corner. <laughs> like just down the road. And I'm like, what are the odds? These, these beadlocks, like I'm talking to a company in America and they put me on to just a couple of country blokes in Swan Hill that are making these beadlocks. So that's why the boys are here today because I said like, you'd be silly not to like come down, shop, oh, yeah. like, like let's talk about see how it works and stuff. I'm just keen to see if it's actually as good as it's meant to be because I think this is a bit of a solution uh, for the problem that I have. The reason I'm sort of filming it is because it might be for some other people too. So I just wanted to share it because there's literally nothing online about this. And you know, I, I like, I'm always a big fan of an Aussie made product as well. And if there's Aussie made and especially some local boys, it's it's good to see a quality product that's, you know, it's gonna be practical for what we're doing. We're gonna find out. <laughs> we we hope so. At the end of the day, we're gonna put it in a, in a wheel and we're gonna go out, we're gonna find a track and we're just gonna let them down and see if they work, but we're gonna torture test them. So before we actually go and fit a tire and everything up to a rim, I just wanna show you, the boys have brought this down, basically a cutout just to sort of show you what it is, but the, the beadlock, it's basically an inner tube for your tire, which is, tires have tubes in them, so that's what it is, it's an inner tube. This is just like a canvas tire tube belt, or something you might call it, looks like a big turbo beanie. Basically what you do is you put a tube in the tire, and then this goes over it, and you pump it up, but instead of the tube being able to, to pump up here, it can't because this holds it. So instead of pumping up, it pumps out and it locks the beads. So if you have a look in here, you'll see. So this tube, you can have, you know, 40 to 50 PSI in this tube and it's pushing on this bead here. There's no way that that could come off. Obviously, this is the bit where a mechanical bead lock only locks the outside of the rim where your, where your ring's bolted on. This is actually locking both sides. Another point that I've seen guys in America were saying that they're lighter. Do you reckon they'd be lighter? This is just a tube in a rim. Like, you don't need a fancy rim, which is also another thing. You don't need to buy new rims. You can put these on any rim. It'll give you a lot more wheel options. When you go for a bolted bead lock, the things I look at is the actual design of how the bolts screw in if they screw in to metal or aluminium. There's all these things that I've got to look and it limits to me to like a certain few rims and I've got to pick out of them. You can put this in a bolted bead lock if you want. Like you literally put this in anything. So another thing, I've got the actual tire fitter here with us today and he's just balanced up the first one. And he said that it's actually, they've balanced up better because that was probably one question we're gonna get like, oh, how does it affect the balancing? But he reckons that it actually balanced better because the weight is more central on the inside of the wheel, not on the outside. So that's another thing. Obviously you can see this tube is in here and this is locked the beads, but the rest of this area here, you can still inflate and deflate that like as normal. But this actual inner tube, it acts as like, a, you call it like a bump stop. So on a traditional rim, if you got your mechanical bead lock and you let it to zero PSI, or you got a flat or you slashed a tire or something, what would happen is your tire would go all the way to the rim. And if you're, you know, on a steep hill in the middle of high country, somewhere where you can't stop or whatever, and you just have to bash it across a few rocks. So you're gonna damage your rim or run the risk of damaging your rim. So with these, it actually acts as like a bit of a buffer. So what I've been told, and I said it before, you can actually run these on zero PSI. So if you have a flat tire, you can still drive, although it wouldn't be recommended. You can actually still drive on a flat tire because you've got a little bit of air in here as sort of like a second second air to protect it. So yeah, that's that's really cool to me. Like, Hey Brendan, just, uh, just a question here, mate. Have you been taking safety tips off Mac Preston? Have you, you been watching Shed Life? So the boys have actually brought this picture down here. I don't know if we said it, but although I can't find any information on these, they've been around for 20 years in Australia. And basically they've just never been advertised. Like no one's ever tried to sell them. They've just been sort of a word of mouth thing in the racing scene. So this is a picture that the boys brought. This is a car in competition racing. And this tire is on zero PSI under acceleration around the corner. Now that tire there, he didn't actually get a punch or anything. This is one of the guys that just wanted to see if it worked. So he done it. Like it looks absolutely terrible, the tire. But yeah, it's still holding on the beads. So that was this exact same bead lock in this tire, but this is like years ago. So they've been around there. Yeah, and they're an Australian thing. I just can't believe that I haven't seen them sooner. The boys are just fitting up the first one. I've got no idea. I've fitted a few tires in my life, but you know, I haven't fitted many with tubes. So 
I've got Brandon here on the tire machine that he's coming to give us a hand, and the other boys are sort of walking him through it. What do you reckon, Brandon? Yeah, pretty simple. Pretty it's simple. Easier than doing up all those bolts. <laughs> looks like you're making a bit of a mess there. Yeah, it looks a bit messy, but what it is, is where's the little bag of stuff? No, no, that's that's right. <laughs> where's, the, where's the bag? Oh, I, actually just, I actually just got it here, mate. <laughs> so it's baby powder, so we said? Oh, chalk. Chalk. French chalk. chalk. French chalk. So, <laughs> <laughs> now this is actually chalk. And yeah, what this is, it's like a lubricant. So, you know, you can see it all over the bin here. It's just, yeah, it's a lubricant to stop the tube getting pinched and to help it all try and slide in, but. It stops chafe. Stops a bit of chafe. Brandon looks like he's making a bit of a mess here, but what he's doing is basically we've got the the canvas tube in there. Uh, it's kind of half on. And then we push the rubber tube into the inside of that. So we've got a second valve in, in under here. So you've got to drill a little hole to put a second valve through. That's for the inner tube. So you can pump up your outer tire and your inner tube separately. So what Brandon's now doing is pushing the, the tube in to the inside of this canvas belt. When he gets it all in there, he'll line up the valve and he'll get it all right. And then he'll just pop the tire on and just pump it all up. So just to show you there, that's the uh, the second valve that I was talking about. So that is the second air valve. So that one there pumps up the tube that's inside. Essentially you pump that one up and it locks the beads and then you can just pump your normal tire up and down individually. So in the bag comes with a bit of paper. Fitting instructions on the back. Brendan's just done a couple of them and confirmed that he reckons it's pretty good to do as long as you follow that turbo beanie and a tube. Oh, the second valve stem that you need to mount. Come and have a look around here. Brendan's just uh, put a hole in there. Fit the special valve to the original hole and position the notch. Is that that valve? Yep. Step one, it says to put this valve in to the original hole and apparently this is so that that actually channels down this here and allows the tire to pump up. Right, so now it says that we need to use our bag of chalk and lightly dust down the tube and the inside of the casing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give this to Brendan because I've got clean hands. Looking for a bag of chalk, mate. Show me a piece of your heart, a piece of your love. I'm calling you up to get down, down, down. The way that we touch is never enough I'm turning you up to get down, down Show me a piece of your heart, a piece of your love I'm calling you up to get down, down, down The way that we touch is never enough I'm turning you up I'm back. Actually, used to work here. <laughs> what? Sorry, just quickly. What if it's... Da, 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 uh. That's a nice boulder. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Oh, I look pretty good. That's a nice boulder. We go and test these things out. Wait, they look good on the Ute. They do look really good. Pretty quick, simple process to get them on. So they're on the ute now. Are we heading out for a wheel? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the ute out to somewhere. We're going to have to find a hard track, aren't we? We might have a look at that app. We'll, we'll talk about that on the way. We'll um yeah we'll go we'll go and have a look. We'll try yeah. and find a hard we'll okay. find a hard track. Scout around for some tracks. And we'll let some air out of them and see if they come off the bead. Yeah. A mechanical bead lock versus these. Are they what what would you say? They're similar. They're easier or they're harder or they're definitely easier. They're definitely e 100%. easier and the balancing of them a lot better. You've heard it from the professional. Thanks for coming down. Thanks. For it's a, been Thank a you. very interesting time no, and uh, I just hope that this sorts out my problem. Where can everyone find you? Go to avanterra.group, which is A-V-A-N-T-E-R-R-A.group. We'll see you there. Avanterra.group. We'll see you there. Pwah, all right, all right, let's go. We're out here in the in my local bush, and uh, we're going to go do some testing on these wheels. We're going to see if they're as good as they're meant to be, because they sound good, but like, they're not good unless they are good. Well, we're going to try them. We're going to we're going to really torture <laughs> oh, test them. I just want to be the bloke that actually finds out because I can't find any information online at all about these bead locks and also the tires. They're new, so I want to see how the tires perform because oh yeah, I've been running the same tires for the last 
five years or something. Well, that's it. And it, like, it's, it's so common. Like, as soon as you put a new set of tires on, the amount of questions you get and really want to know what it can do. So That's right. And also, there are a new tire that's just come out. And I've only spoken to, like, as I said, Tyler. And one of the things he said, they were more grippy. Yeah, right. And my, my other tyres that I had before these, they're very hard-wearing, durable tyre. Yeah. But I don't think that they... They, they kind of probably where they let them down a bit It was the grip because they were so hard. On the dry hard. stuff, on the dry... Like on yeah, the, on, on the, the rock. And... They're just, they just a really hard tyre. and they, I didn't I found they just didn't grip... They, like, I was doing burnouts yeah. everywhere. But yeah, anyway, we're going to find out if these are any better or worse or whatever. So I'm just going to go find some rocks and drive up them and see what happens. Yeah. Whenever I'm out here or out anywhere, really, that I'm not familiar with, I just jump on new tracks and, yeah, I, I just basically go in and you know i can look at the track ratings i see how many cars have been down there to get a bit of an idea so yeah i it's my go-to if i'm trying to work out so, what tracks to so do. he's explaining this like i don't know what it is but i actually use it all the time <laughs> but um basically this new track so you can show them on your phone you can see a little bit there but i think there'll be probably a lot of people watching this video that already use that app it's pretty popular oh, it is. so basically this app it's like google maps but for the bush and those colored lines that you can see um, these coloured lines, they're actually like colour-coded track ratings. So like a green one's easy and a, a black one's hard and like a red one's really hard kind of thing. I've found that it's pretty accurate. It's just a good thing for, for anyone that's going out in the bush. So I just wanted to show it to you while we're here just so I can like set a bit of an example. So I've got full version. So I actually, I pay for, I've got the subscription. So it gives me topography. So, which is nice because sometimes like in the wet, in the high country, I like to know that if I'm going to be going uphill or downhill when I'm, you know, on a on a real steep track, so yeah, it's it's good to look at the topography and then you get the extra benefits like you know when you click on a track, so you can go in there and you want to look up old bluff. It actually gives you a lot of info about how many cars have been down there in the past six months, all the different bits and pieces if there's hard sections. So yeah, I've I've been paying for it and using it like full version for probably two three years now and it's been unreal i reckon i've probably had about two years and i've only just just got the paid version a couple of weeks ago and just like had a look to see the different stuff and yeah there's a lot more stuff on the paid version obviously but the, yeah. like i mean the free one was the free works great it's like a community app. It's, it's like it's a so, crowd yeah so like the the more the more people so like it asks you to put in all your vehicle information so that way it rates your car so you tell it you know tire size lockers all that kind of stuff it gives your car a rating and then with that rating it actually times you on the tracks and depending on how long it takes you to do a track if you stop for a certain section it actually then calculates and then that's how the track ratings are done so the more people that use mm. it the more people that accurately put in their car details are actually helping add to that track rating and keeping it accurate and keeping it up to date. So James, the uh, the guy who runs it, like he's, yeah, just basically come up with the idea himself. And it's just like a guy in Melbourne. It's not, a, it's not a big team of like people. It's just a guy that goes out four wheel driving that's designed this whole app. And it's really smart the way that he's done it. And the more people that contribute, so if you've got it on there, what you've got to have it, um, your trip logging. You've got to be logging, yeah. And you've got to have your car details in there. So make sure if you are using it, because I didn't have mine in there, because I didn't even know until I was explaining, because I always thought, like, how does it work? As long as you're using it and you've got your car details in there, every track that you drive, that you're using it, and you're da data logging your trip, you're contributing to the track ratings and all the whole database. So it's everyone that's using yeah. it is, like, helping to have this really good app that's, like, it's so handy because, like, what I use it for is, say I go to somewhere that I've never been, the way there'd be two things. I'll be looking for a really hard track for something fun to drive, or I'll be in a car that can't do a hard track and I'll be trying to avoid it accidentally going down a hard track. And it's nearly like a safety feature. Oh, it is. To me, like, otherwise, because I've spent years driving around the bush just looking for tracks. I used to come out here where we are now. I used to just literally drive around just trying to find, you know, something fun. And, and you now, could drive around for hours. You could drive around, anything. yeah, and you can be, like, unsatisfied there. Yeah. You could literally go anywhere in Australia because it's Australia-wide map. Well, and, I actually um, just recently used it in Tassie. So on my Tassie trip last yeah, year, we I'm, used it and like we logged uh, Climbies and Cumberland. Like, mm. yeah, we had it going in there and yeah, it works. Like, yeah, the good thing is even if you're planning a trip, you can actually like just plan your trip around hard tracks. Like you can say, well, I'm, you know, if you're from Queensland, you're coming down to Vic, you just go in, search for whatever type of tracks you're looking for mm. and you can plan a whole trip. And just recently when we were out with Mac and TJ in the high country, Burgoyne's track. Like, so I did Burgoyne's earlier in the year, Anzac last year. And yeah, it was like, it was pretty fun. You know, I was chopped out. And at that time, Burgoyne's was actually black. And then when we went to it, I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. Like it's blue. And that was within four months or five months or something of me doing it. And then, yeah, we get there and the thing's great. It's like a highway. And so the, it was accurate. So, you know, mm. it was, 
So I'm just having a look at the app here and like obviously you got all these tracks around here, but I probably don't really need this because I've come here that many times. I sort of know where I'm it's going. Backyard, we're just going to go down here and go around that corner down there and up to that rock up there, and we're going to test these tyres out. When I wake up, well I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk, well I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who gets drunk next to you. If I heaver, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's heavering to you. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. When I'm working, yes, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's working hard for you. Whoa. What do you reckon, Jono? Man, I hope you're not going to maybe walk up this thing. <laughs> I am. You haven't been to this track before? Nah, I've, I've, I've been here. I've only made it about <laughs> probably 50 metres shy it's... of this section. So I'm excited to actually have a, have a good look and see what it's like. So this is Old Bluff track. It's just my, like, it's probably the, one of the closest kind of hard tracks to where I live in Emu. And um, it's this like real orangey dirt and as soon as it gets any water on it it just turns to like clay that's like nearly undrivable. this track i haven't driven it when it's fully wet it's just like it's, it's hard when it's dry and when it's wet you just can't get any traction so it's a real challenge yeah last time i tried to come up here they just freshly graded the bottom section and it was like a highway and it, not possible like I you couldn't, couldn't even drive up. the graded section <laughs> <laughs> that's how slippery it gets but yeah it's dry today so which is good I, I honestly probably wouldn't have even bothered coming here if it was wet i'm going to test out these tires on this track i actually drove it about oh, three or four weeks ago but i was on my off-road tires <laughs> i've gone down a couple inches in size and i had my bolted v locks on then which i don't have now That's a half a Jono rut. Usually when I come to this track or a track that looks like this, I'll just dump my tires to about 10 PSI or, you know, give or take. Especially this track. Last time I done this was 10 PSI. I've and issued a challenge. I've, I've told I've told Pooley that he's got to try and get up. We're going to see as far as we can get on road pressures. So just for the purpose of this video, I kind of want to show the difference it makes between having air in your tires or no air in your tires. So what, what do you reckon? We'll start. Let's just start... We'll start with full pressure, and I'll just see what happens. I reckon I'll be able to drive a bit of it, but it's going to get hard up there. I know there's this, there's this big step up there. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to drive this on that size tyre. It's basically a 35. Um, I don't even know if it's going to make it up here. This is a 37 track. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'll, I'm, I'm ready for a challenge. So we're going to drive like road pressure, and then I think as soon as I start getting stuck, I'll just dump them to like 10. Uh, maybe even less. Yeah, just, well, we just want to see if the beadlock works, and I'm probably going to need it to get up here. I just want to see if it'll do it, if they'll work on zero. Obviously, they're brand new tyres and brand new rims. I'm not just going <laughs> to destroy my wheels for a video. But yeah, I'll let the air out of them, see what it does. I've got a compressor, I can pump them back up. So I'm going to hand the, I'm going to hand the camera over to Jono, and I'm going to come and drive up here. Uh -huh. Oh, she actually bit up then. I didn't. I did not expect that. We were just getting ready for a for a nice slow mo of the tires slipping. Oh, I said to Jono, walk around the other side and you know like film these tires slipping, and then we'll let the air out of them. And he started filming and it drove straight up. So. <laughs> Oh, it's got ran over. Oh. Yeah, nice boulder. <laughs> It'll keep going. It's a boulder going up a boulder. Keep going, mate. Uh When 
I'm gonna be the man who's going to be one of two. I think that for my own personal safety, I don't feel comfortable driving up there with full pressures in the tyres, so how about now we just let them down? Probably didn't pick the best spot there down. Those of you that haven't seen my contraption, <laughs> this is a homemade tyre, automatic deflator, whatever you want to call it, thingamabob. There's two compressors in here and I've got four lines, there's two on the other side toolbox and I just go on, they've got quick connects on them, so I just go and plug them all in there, go Jono. Yeah, you just um, quick connect, plug that in like that. That tells me there's 35, there's 35 psi in the tire, and I can just let it down. But I'm going to go plug the other side in because I've got two more lines. This here, I'll, I'll show you later. But basically, I plug that into there, and I can flick that one on there, pumping up now. Good spots to air down. Yeah, mate, there's a fire extinguisher rolling down the track there somewhere. Toyota handbrake, fire extinguisher. You, you could have picked a worse spot, but it's actually not too bad airing down just here. At least, you, at least we've uh, we've proved ourselves. We said we were going to drive a bit of it. We've we've done a decent effort getting here. <laughs> and we're one with nature. Yeah. Out in the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, get the last one on there, would you? Gotta get up this track. I've got to make it to the pub for dinner. <laughs> if I miss me Palmer tonight, I'll be very upset. I was gonna. That, that actually shows like the gimbal's obviously flat. And you can see the angle of the tray. So we're on a decent hill just sitting here. <laughs> I'm puffed just from walking around the year once. <laughs> this here is the gauge that's reading all four of these lines are connected together. So it just equalizes. So currently now all my four tires will be equalizing to the same pressure, which is telling me here, which is 34.5 PSI. This one here, these compressors are automatic. They're all hooked up. I just have to plug that in. So I can turn that on. That's pumping them up now, which I need to let them down, but I'm just showing this anyway. Now that that's stopped, that one lets them down. So you're deflating all four tyres at the moment simultaneously. Simultaneously. While just, while, while just standing back and making a YouTube video. Yeah, so I can actually now just do whatever I want, <laughs> and all four of my tyres let themselves down. And then it's just the same when I go to air and back up. But it takes a bit longer. But there's nothing worse than sitting there having to maintain each tyre. You're squatting down, <laughs> looking at pressures. And like, with this here, and people have suggested that I should put like an automatic cutoff thing. And it would be really cool if I could like set the PSI and stuff. But it's probably too complicated. I can't find the right thing to do it with. So the way it works is I just stop that and just, you know, wait a couple of seconds. And that's saying there's 23 PSI in them now. So... They're already halfway down, if you know what I mean. So you've already dropped like nearly 15 PSI. Out in of all four of them. 20 seconds. In 20 seconds. <laughs> oh. Boy, I had a handbrake. <laughs> She's bagging out. So basically, the gauge is saying 10 PSI, so I've just shut it off at that. Now, mm. just quick connect, so I'll unplug them. Put them back in there and <laughs> away we go. I don't know. I definitely would not be going down to 10 PSI if I didn't have some type of speed locking situation going on. Well, and you've had a look at the track that we're about to drive up. This is not a track that you want to pop a bead on, so I'm putting a lot of faith in these. Even just trying to reverse back down some of those rock steps, it's not an easy task. And, and this is why bead locks are an important thing to me, and this is why I've gone to such a great length to have a bead lock that I'm not going to get harassed for having. Because even though these aren't my my off-road wheels, like, you know, I've still got my other wheels and I'm still going to use them for the hard stuff. But if I'm driving somewhere and I want to turn up a track and do it and it looks hard, I've got a rubber arm. Well, this is a Thursday. This is a Thursday Arvo for you, isn't it? Like, you'll finish work and just come out here for a quick <laughs> wheel.
Paulie, how does it feel? You've just driven. So a track that at the start, you told us you've only driven on 37s and you were quite doubtful. I've been to this track probably, and I've driven it probably like 20 times, say, and I've only driven that line once and it was on 37s. And, and the other times I tried, I'd failed. So it's dry now, but I've just driven it on 35s. And on 10 pound, on like 10 pound without a normal mechanical bead lock, you would not even consider driving a track like that. Like, we, and we've already seen, we've already scratched the rims. Put Sorry, Will Pros. <laughs> Sorry, Will Pros. <laughs> I've but... already scratched your rims. The first drive, I just left the tyre service and they're scratched. Sorry, <laughs> Will Pros. But that just goes to show that there's a, there's been a rock that's punched into that tyre, punched past the rim, and did not bother it oh, whatsoever. It we just let a bit more out, just to say, we're gonna, we're gonna let... We're gonna go to zero. We're gonna go to zero. Let's... I would have liked to do it on that there, but you know, it's a little bit dangerous to do it there. It's, we're actually at the top of a mountain. So, you know, we're not just on a hard track on flat, like down at the bottom of a hill going up a hill. We're actually at the top of a mountain. <laughs> so for something to go wrong up here, we're not going to do it down there anyway. No, let's, let's go find something a bit safer and let's actually go yeah, so get it down to zero. It's a bit more flat here. We haven't finished the track. That was just the hardest part of the track. But some of those rock steps, they were they were 35 yeah. inches high. Like They're big rock steps, those. And my ute's a big ute, so sometimes... It's deceiving. You know, and also, when you watch a car that just drive up a track like nothing, it doesn't look that hard. But honestly, like anyone that's been here... They'll vouch for me. That's like not an easy track. Oh, no. Nah, that's. And yeah. It's just walked up. But like, I really, I honestly didn't have any dramas at all. There was a couple of times I had reset and just like had another go. I stopped because I was going to run over Jono taking yeah. a video. And then I got stuck. So I had to have another go. But like, I basically just walked straight up it. And for the people that are like, you know, why do you need beadlocks and this and that? If you look at what, when we started that track, oh. how hard it was struggling. Yeah. Just on the, you know, the like, ramp up on the, the yeah, first it was just obstacle. like loose, loose, like dirt, like mm. loose dirt and stuff. Like, some rocks. I, I did drive up it, but like it was hard work. Yeah. And then I just walked up all them rock steps like nothing. Anyway, have a look at this rim down here. Cause, so Jono's just, just let a bit of this out by hand. And I've just parked up, you know, on a nice safe spot to <laughs> get out and take a video. But like, if you look at this, I don't know how much air's even in this tire. Obviously, it feels like it's dead flat. It, it's low. Look at it's... that. <laughs> and. It's still on the bead, like, yeah. How about what we'll do, we've got some flat ground over here, we might drive over there, and let's just let all the air out of all tyres. Yeah, let's go, zero, zero PSI. Like, I don't recommend doing this, but I just want to see if we can do it. Yeah. We're currently sitting at 9593, so they're, they're equalizing because that one was a little bit further down. No, send, her to, send her home, mate. Send her to zero. It's actually that slow coming out the air there you because can the you can't even hardly hear it because there's hardly any in them. There's no air in the tires. If I flick this valve here, <laughs> nothing's happening because there is no air left. Once again, I would not recommend doing this. If I can pump these tires up, we're gonna have to drive all the way back down on four flat tires. You reckon, Jono? Mate, I'm ready to go. We're packed up. It feels lower. It's about five inches lower, to be honest. Oh, they are flapping over themselves. <laughs> Yeah, mate. I was aiming for it. I can hear something. Oh, we've got a flat.
flat tyre out, boy. Could you have a look for me? Mate, I'll, I'll tell you what, you haven't got an A flat tyre, you've actually got four. And you can really feel the traction. It must be those two Goodyear folders. It mustn't have anything to do with the fact that they are oh, flat. Nah, I can't believe that rim is off the ground. You can see the car is flexed out there. It is tucking. With the second air, you've got the rim there and the ground's here. It's just got that, what would it be, a couple of inches. Yeah, it probably sits about two inches. Or they call inches. it the bump stop. Still got like 50 PSI in there. So my rim can't touch the ground. One of the things where I reckon just from a safety standpoint, even using them on the road, if you've got a flat tire on the freeway or something, you wouldn't want to, but it'd be a lot safer to drive on those as they are than what it would to change your tire on the side of the freeway you know you could just limp it to a off ramp and get somewhere a lot safer whereas any other situation that tire would be straight off and you'd be driving on a rim mm. we yeah could have just let one down yeah absolutely but, you know, they said that we could do it so i just wanted to make sure we're here for your entertainment as well we, we weren't going to come out here and half ass it <laughs> what we have proven today is that the new goodyear tire can handle being driven on zero psi and we've tested it four times. We've done it in collaboration. In conjunction. With second air bead locks, which honestly, I had no idea. They seemed really good to me and it's such a simple idea, but I just wanted to actually find out. We've still got to pump them back up and that'll be the last test. If they pump back up, that's sold it for me. If they pump back up, then we're sweet. And it's pretty crazy to think, what, how many weeks ago did you actually find out about these? You know, we only just found out about these oh, it's a couple, like, two weeks ago, yeah, three weeks two ago. three weeks ago. Come around here and have a look at these. <laughs> look at the flex, mate. Got no air in me tires. Dipped out on the ground. I was tempted to go up and just try this next section of the four-wheel drive track. Just when I've walked up here, because when I sit in the car, I'm so used to driving up stuff. I just felt like I was just driving up a road. And I've got out, and like this is actually a four wheel drive track. I'm driving up with no air in my tyres. Just come stand down here next to the back of the car for a sec. Like just, I'm struggling to even just get down this, but. It's not that bad. What I'm just <laughs> trying to say is, we're not on a flat road here, and I'm driving up with no air in my tyres. You can see there, like that's that's pretty well flexed out. Like I'm that's... a big Aussie boy. <laughs> These are brand new rims, brand new tyres. And brand new second hand bead locks. I reckon we air them back up. This is going to be the final test. I don't want to do it while I'm right here. We'll try and find some flat ground. I'm going to have to drive further, unfortunately, for the wheels. And let's air them back up. All right, let's go. I think this is going to take a while. They are definitely pumping back up. Can't believe they're going. It's unreal. I don't know if anyone's ever had a mechanical bolted bead lock that only locks one side of the bead at zero PSI like this and tried to pump it up before. Cause I don't, do you reckon it'd seal? It might. It'd be hard to say, like driving the way you were, it was putting a lot of stress on that rear <laughs> bead. Like, I don't know whether, it'd be interesting to know, like tell it, <laughs> let us know. If in the anyone comments. knows, let us know in the comments if you reckon you could do this with a mechanical bead lock. I think there would be a good chance that you probably could. But I would just like to know, has anyone experienced, you know, a, a flat on the track? And with, driven. And driven. How did it compare to this? Obviously, we've let all four tyres down. I think it's probably unlikely you'd get yeah. four flats. But, you know, we just want to know. I've still got mechanical bead locks, and I'm not saying that these are better. I always just wanted to know if, if they'll do the job as good. So far. like So like, far, they have. Them, yeah. And, like, the thing for me is I just keep getting deep affected for having mechanical bead locks. These are still my daily wheels. These aren't my, oh, I literally just drove the hardest track in probably the Pyrenees, but still with saying that if I was planning on doing hard tracks, these are not my wheels of choice that I'd probably bring, but just having that piece in mind, I can just literally take my U anywhere as it is, all engineered and ready to go. Like I'm gonna be probably running these to Cape York this year, so yeah. And you're insured, you're not gonna get defected, like you are 100% good to go. That's exactly right. Another thing with these second air bead locks, boys were saying, and it makes sense, is they're taking up a capacity of the tires, 20%. You, yeah. you would have seen that when earlier we had the cutout tire. So the tube actually takes up that much of the tire and the rest is what you've got to air up and let down. If you took the, the volume of all four of them tubes, that might equal one whole tire. So instead of having to air up four, you're, you're airing up three technically, like in times of how long you're gonna wait. That ability to air up that 20% quicker, that's uh, when you're trying to get to the pub, 
That's uh. When you're trying to get a KFC for a zinger box, because you've been stuck on a truck all day. Oh, so we're all pumped up. It, it worked. Can't hear any air leaks. Oh, you didn't lose your deluxe valves. Oh, not the deluxe valves. Better put the kernel back on. The most important part. I think my new Goodyear tyres have handled that quite nicely. I'm astounded. There is, <laughs> there's no cuts. There's no tread missing. Like the next test is going to be the kilometres taking them to Cape York and actually putting them through some road testing. But as far as off-road testing goes, we've done <laughs> That's it. pretty we're, good, eh? Hey? We're impressed. I know it's only one track and that we literally fitted them today. But we've just given them some, some abuse, haven't we? We, we gave them, we abused them. That was, <laughs> you have a look at these rocks. Like these aren't round, like these are sharp rocks, you know? So like they're not, they're not kind on the tires. Anyway, we're gonna put the rest of these valve caps on and then what do you reckon, Jono? We're heading to KFC. We're heading straight to KFC. Thanks for having me out here today to help you test these new tyres. That's all right, John. Oh, you know, I couldn't have done it on my own. It's, well, I could have, but yeah, if something had to run oh, wrong. It's, or... it's always good to be out with the boys. Like, nah, it's you... good to get John out yeah. on the local tracks and, you know, show him around, check a few fences. Thanks, you guys, all for watching. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm probably not going to be able to do something like this. This is going to be one time off us. Yeah. So make sure you give it a like. And I would really want to know in the comments a couple of those questions we mentioned throughout the video. The mechanical bead locks, has anyone, you know, done this kind of thing with them? We just, we just want to know, like, just out of curiosity. And I, I reckon I'd, I'd like to know a bit of a story. Like, if you've got, a, like, half a story about, uh, you know, a time where you reckon these second airs could have come in handy for you, that would actually be interesting as well. It would be very, very interesting because I know I've been in a few situations where you're at the top of the track and, you know, you're thinking, like, if I had done a tyre or something here, I, like, that'd be it. Like, Well, you know what? And sometimes you might even just be on a tight track, I don't know, fucking blackberry berry bushes all over the place <laughs> and you're getting stabbed. Like, I don't know. I, mate, I'm lazy. Any excuse to drive further than what I, what I probably should, I'd be doing it. That's right. And, like, as I said, most important important for me i just fed up with the red and blues coming on behind me i could chase down th through the bush get pulled over in the bush down here in victoria and defected on a four-wheel drive track like they're that on to us down here i'm trying to do the right thing just to avoid that and send a good message as well like and, you know yeah. it's, it is cool to have mechanical bead locks we all love them they, they do, do look really good they that, look the part even these rims that i've got here these black rhinos like i honestly think they look pretty tough they look like a bead lock i know yeah, they fake, have that same but, effect well but... they're not fake that's the thing i've got real bead locks <laughs> at least there's an option. There's an option for the people that, that want the benefits of the mechanical bead lock, but that don't want to, you know, have not have the insurance, not have those things. That's exactly right. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and you just know where my website is. This shirt that I'm wearing, you can find this on my website if you want to get yourself some Emu Customs. Well, I need merch. to get some. I need. I feel a bit Maybe naked you could be moment. sponsored by Emu Customs. Oh, you reckon I could pick up a oh, sponsor? You could probably pick up a sponsorship. I reckon oh. you're pretty good on the camera. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> I, I actually got. I sponsored uh, Smoko this today, so a couple more videos. I might earn myself a shirt. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you give it a like, and if you're not already subscribed, go and subscribe because we'll be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff. We've got some big trips coming up. Cape York, sending it to the tip. That's our next big trip, and it's not very far away. So. So yeah, Baz is going to be on the road this year. And I, if I can keep my car off jack stands for a long enough to actually get it on an episode, you might actually see my car out as well. <laughs> see you later.